people are joining now. Hello, welcome everybody. So we'll maybe wait uh, one minute more to allow attendees to join us before starting, but welcome already. And we will slowly start. So welcome and uh, thank you for uh, joining our uh, breakout about the exploration of the SSH data landscape, thematic discovery portals in the in the EOSC. And behind this um, uh, exciting title, uh, we will focus during the, the session on the two uh, discovery portals, the SSH Open Marketplace and the GoTriple platform. And you can see on this uh, first slide all the speakers and contributors of uh, of this session. Um, so thank you again for joining us uh, today. A few house rules um, before, uh, before starting. So the session is recorded and uh, will be uh, available afterwards. Uh, please stay muted during the, the presentations. And uh, you can also use the, the chat to, to ask your question during the sessions. And we will also have uh, different um, uh, times for a discussion, different moments for uh, for discussion during the session itself. So why uh, this session today? Um, because several projects are working to enhance the discovery of uh, thematic resources in the EOSC. You might also have uh, followed the common session with the five cluster projects yesterday morning during this uh, free EOSC Hub uh, shock event. And for the social sciences and, and humanities, we would like today to investigate uh, possibilities of collaborations uh, between two discovery portals in the making. Uh, so the SSH uh, Open Marketplace developed within SHOC and the GoTriple platform developed within the Triple project. So these two portals um, have the mission to ease the discoverability or findability of SSH resources. They are developed uh, with a different approach and um, as two separated funded projects. But we would like to, to investigate uh, possible synergies and uh, alignment to make sure that uh, the global SSH offer in the EOS context uh, makes sense. And also to, to avoid uh, duplication of work uh, when possible between the two teams that are working on, on these uh, two projects. So the idea today is really to, to connect uh, and share expertise between uh, both technical teams for a first uh, assessment of the ongoing work and, and identification of uh, potential common work, keeping in mind our existing framework. So we have um, uh, both shock and triple projects are running project with their own timeline for the development of their uh, discovery portals. Uh, we already know that we can probably not dedicate additional person months for it, but we can definitely uh, open up collaboration uh, when, um, when possible. And this is uh, what we want to, to discuss uh, today. So um, how we will um, um, discuss this for one hour and a half. So we are together for one hour and a half. Uh, this uh, introduction is almost over after this uh, outline slide, then the floor will be uh, for all the names you can see on this slide. Um, so we will have um, two short presentation of uh, 10 minutes of the uh, two discovery portals, um, followed by uh, some uh, presentation of the uh, connection hypothesis that we can already envision. This will be a kind of long introduction at the end, but to be sure that we are all at the same uh, level of uh, apprehension for, uh, for these two projects and these two portals. So the GoTriple platform will be presented by uh, Laurent Capelli and, and Virginie Ngo from CNRS Humanum, and they are leading the integration and building of the Triple platform. Uh, Matej Djoko uh, from ACDHCH uh, of the Austrian Academy of Science uh, is leading the development of the marketplace application in the shock project and will present this. Um, um, Dieter van Wiedvank and Alexander Koenig uh, from Clarin um, are leading interoperability task for the shock marketplace and they will present this connection hypothesis. We will have a few minutes for discussions. And after we have identified two topics that we would like to discuss more in details during the session, 
Uh, the first one uh, is the data sets and publications that are common types of content for the SSH Open Marketplace and the GoTriple platform. And this discussion will be uh, introduced and coordinated by Frank Fischer and Arno Gingold. Uh, Frank Fischer is the um, uh, one of DIA director and work package leader for the creation of the marketplace within Shock. And uh, Arno Gingold is a fair data officer at CNRS Open Edition and for Operas. Um, and the second topic, data ingestion pipelines in the SSH Open Marketplace and GoTriple. So here we will have uh, Laurent back again and um, with uh, Ola Novak from the Postnan Supercomputing and Networking Centers, uh, working on the data aggregation for the SSH Open Marketplace. And finally, um, Suzanne Dumouchel from uh, CNRS Humanum, coordinator of the Triple project, uh, together with uh, Frank, will conclude our uh, session. So this is the plan uh, for this one hour and a half. And now I will just uh, mute myself and let the floor to, um, to Laurent and Virginie for the presentation of the GoTriple platform. So thank you, Laurent. Yes. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's Laurent from uh, Humanum. Um, so I'm going to present you the, the Triple uh, project. Um, so the Triple project uh, is uh, the aim of the, this project is to construct a web platform um, focused on uh, three, uh, three different objects. Uh, and this platform uh, will be open to researcher, but uh, also for journalists and citizens at large. Uh, so these discovery tools um, will focus on document. Uh, what I what is called document is publication, standard publication and data sets. Uh, but it's also open to project and to profiles. Um, the, the triple platform, what, what different between the, the over search engine? Uh, so the triple project is focused on ACSH data and it will uh, enrich uh, document profile and project in nine languages. Um, and it will also enrich data based on uh, vocabularies that uh, will be constructed in the triple project. Um, next, please. So the triple project is divided in two projects. Uh, the first is the triple core platform, and the second project is the Go Triple uh, platform, which will be the the front end of the of the triple project and this will be a, a, a web uh, interface um, the document triple document are um, are harvest uh, harvested in what we call national aggregators or european aggregators um, National, uh, national ACSH aggregator. Uh, we currently, we have uh, uh, defined uh, almost two, three uh, national aggregator. The first one is the EasyDoor platform, uh, platform uh, which uh, in Humanum, uh, we will uh, know very well because uh, the EasyDoor platform, it, it's uh, constructed by Humanum uh, until 10 years. Uh, we find also uh, uh, Moza in Belgium. Uh, and for the European aggregator, uh, the, we focused on Open Air, Europeana, CESDA, Clarin, for example. But this is uh, in the middle, you see that uh, we have place for uh, over aggregators. So there's, uh, there's documents are uh, harvest by uh, in a triple data model that uh, we are currently uh, defined. Um, and after collecting this data, uh, data are, um, are processes in, in, in a triple core 
pipeline that we will present you after. Uh, what's uh, the document uh, when they arrive in the triple core, they are enriched. Uh, enrich, uh, what we do in the enrichment system? We categorize the document in SSH discipline. Uh, we annotate the document with uh, triple thesaurus and we normalize also uh, the, the metadata and link the, the, the object uh, each uh, together. We linked profile to project, project to document and document to, 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 um, to project. Uh, after all, uh, the pipeline will index uh, all the document in a triple database and the document are, are available uh, in, uh, with an API. Um, and the second uh, part of the triple project is the Go triple platform, uh, which is uh, based on the, this API. Um, and this is the discovery platform, the Go triple discovery platform. Um, the, the, so this platform, this discovery platform is based on innovative services um, and will produce a search interface, but also um, visualization interface interface uh, next please so um, I, I focus on the pipeline on the triple pipeline so we will uh, you you see here the triple core pipeline which harvest the document so currently we we are working on the harvestment so we did not know currently uh, what's we should put in this harvestment. Uh, the enrichment system and the normalization system is based on um, on the categorization and annotation we in Humanum uh, usually use in Isidore uh, platform. Uh, and this uh, core, uh, the triple core is based on the source repository, the tether Tesori repository and an administration of the of the triple core. Uh, the, ex the indexation is uh, made by uh, an elastic search uh, cluster, and then uh, documents are available uh, in an API, but also in a graph, uh, an RDF graph uh, database. And uh, the Go triple is also made uh, made on this indexation. Uh, next, uh, and just to finish uh, the presentation, uh, this is the current triple data model uh, for the documents, so publication and data set. Uh, we use the schema.org uh, vocabulary for the document, the project, and the profiles. Uh, so a document is a creative works, is linked to a project by a schema uh, funder. Um, for a project, uh, projects are, are, uh, are harvested by on open air, but also on uh, national um, funders. Uh, and uh, we also use the schema vocabulary uh, and the document and project are are linked to a profile uh, with the creator um, the properties. Uh, for a profile, uh, we currently uh, use the property uh, that are available in document and in in project, but uh, the, we will add some metadata for a profile. And we are currently uh, looking with uh, what we can have 
in ORCID. Um, and also, uh, we will look at uh, LinkedIn, uh, ResearchGate, uh, Academia to, to uh, populate the metadata of profiles. Uh, I think uh, I have finished the presentation, the very fast presentation of the triple uh, project. Thank you very much, Laurent. And uh, now Matei will uh, say a few words on the, on the SSH Open Marketplace. Uh, yeah, so also hi from me, Matei Joshua from Austrian Digital Center for Digital Humanities in Vienna. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the SSH Open Marketplace has some already quite a tradition uh, or development behind it. The original idea has been circulated in the Daria context for a few years and is now one of the pillars of the Daria strategic plan. Um, this picture is from the proposal stage of the shock project. So, um, but it shows a few kind of highlights of the or what we were circulating at that point. I think we're not that far off from from this idea, or we did not. So, so this uh, still most of it is valid. Um, so the main so main is meant as a discovery portal for SSH resources and will be understand under resources is so I think we already see here the first kind of distinction to, to triple our focus. We do have data sets and publications as well, but our focus is on tools and services and training materials around those and especially also workflow. So it's more trying to answer the question of how to do things. So if I have a task, uh, what would be the, how can I proceed to, to perform it? And what would be the tools that I could use on, on, this, on this path? Um, we have like the, the uh, three guiding principles uh, behind the, the development of the marketplace or the, how it should actually then work. And that is the contextualization, meaning linking things among each other. So the publication that mentioned the tools, uh, the training materials that describe how to use a tool, um, and especially the workflows as, as bringing together different pieces of information along a question or, or task to solve. Um, the other aspect is uh, learn from various uh, attempts in the, future, uh, in the past, uh, the curation. So we have to ensure that the data is of good quality uh, that is presented to the users. Uh, and we have a mixed approach there. Uh, human uh, uh, moderators, automatic, semi-automatic checks where possible and especially also hoping for um, contributions from the community, which is the third principle, uh, trying to involve the community as much as possible, uh, give, by, them allow, by allowing them to giving feedback or suggest changes, uh, uh, suggest new items uh, to, the, to the marketplace, etc. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, so the data model, yeah, so the next slides are a bit technical. Um, I thought it's important to have the, or to go as far as possible into the technical side so that we can actually compare and discuss the, uh, how the two platforms can, where they can meet, so to say, or where they are overlapping. Uh, but we don't have to go into the details of this the data model uh, um, on the, of the diagram. I want to highlight a few aspects there. We have the five main entities, as I mentioned them in the previous slide. Uh, given that we are uh, collecting information from various sources, uh, from heterogeneous sources, we assume or we, we came to the conclusion that we cannot foresee all the necessary information that we will need to capture right from the starting data model. So we incorporated a a mechanism for dynamic, dynamically describing properties by so-called concept-based dynamic properties. So we can add new properties as we go rather easily um, without having to change the basic data model and the, 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 the system. Uh, and we can um, highlight, um, assign or uh, assign voc specific vocabularies to given properties. So we can say which concepts from which vocabulary uh, should be allowed values for a given property. We also represent individual sources because uh, 
uh, so that we can track, so to say, where the individual entities come from or the, the, these items, the items that we collect there. Uh, we allow for uh, custom relations or relations of various types between items. So this is a very generic thing and we so we can basically connect any item to any other item. Um, and we have explicit modeling of actors and contributors and distinguishing like people who create or contributed to the entity that you're describing. So being it a tool, then it would be the developers of the tool. It could be also the funders, who the, right? So this is also flexible to describe what is the role of the actor in a given entity. And on this side, we also have the contributors who are those who actually provided this metadata uh, about the entity. So we distinguish there as well. Okay, yeah, let's move on, I guess. Uh, sorry, may, can we one, one more step back? Uh, one thing to highlight still would be that this, this uh, one of the five entities is the workflow. Uh, and that has a complex structure that allows for being com composed of steps and top steps. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Uh, and this is the kind of our overall architecture. In the center, we have it's a rather traditional one. So, no, uh, yeah, rather conservative architecture, if you wish. We have the server. Uh, built in uh, Java um, with a traditional persistence layer and index solar for indexing. Important thing is it exposes a REST API, so all the interaction with the, with the server goes through a REST API that can be used by the web application, both for this discovery and browsing, uh, but also for editing. So if you want to change information, um, given permissions, you can do that uh, through a web application, which uh, uses uh, communicates through the REST API. Um, and on the other side, there is a ingestion, there are ingestion pipelines which are specific for different sources. Um, uh, and also we have a kind of a spe special case of ingestion pipelines are pipelines that extract information from uh, publications uh, or other texts, for example, of mention for mentions of tools. Um, and when this information is extracted, it's also pushed against the REST API into the system. Uh, we will use the external AI, so the EOSC uh, AI, basically for, for um, authentication. Uh, and vocabulary management is also considered, so this is quite a crucial aspect and also uh, especially crucial for harmonization and, and interoperability between systems, I believe, because uh, vocabularies are kind of the semantic bridges that you could use to make, um, to harmonize uh, data sets, right? Uh, and uh, it is also correspondingly difficult uh, because, yeah, you would want to reuse existing vocabularies, but you need to adjust them uh, to your needs. And you also get different maybe vocabularies from the sources. Um, uh, and so you need to align, harmonize these vocabularies. I cannot go into detail here probably, but uh, just saying that this is a separate component uh, in the architecture and a, quite a crucial one, I think. Okay, and this is, yeah, so that was the, and where, where are we now? Uh, last year we created the, the, the we pro, pro, devised the, the system specification that was deliverable B71. We released in June, 2020, the alpha release. Um, kind of, you can see, a, get a glimpse of it, of the start page here. Uh, currently we are in the stage between alpha and beta. The beta will be December, 2020. Uh, we have uh, most of the reading, so the browsing and searching functionality is, is, is available. We are fine tuning the design and we are working now on the editing forms and the call the curation curation process. So we're integrating the, the curation pipeline and the automatic checks and how to uh, the interaction between the editorial board, so to say, uh, and the editorial workflow. Um, yeah. Uh, we had a few data model iterations as we go along. So as we, as we add more resource, more, more sources and more data, we see what kind of information still needs to be uh, included or we need to consider for the data model. So we're adjusting the data model there. Um, yeah, and as we go along and add more resources, we also see what new data dynamic properties uh, we may need. Um, yeah, I guess that's, about it at the moment. Yeah, so I think we are about five sources are are being harvested at the moment, ingested. 
uh, and a few more are in the pipeline. I think that's that's about it from my side. Thank you, Matei. Uh, so now we will um, have Dieter uh, van Tweedvank uh, and or Alexander Koenig, I don't know, presenting the connection hypothesis between two platforms we thought about while preparing this, uh, this session. Yes, thank you very much, Laura. Um, yeah, indeed. So now that we have introduced uh, both the Go Triple platform and the Shock Marketplace, um, one of the questions that is at the table is how will uh, both platforms uh, interact? Um, and uh, in preparation of this meeting, we've been sitting together with uh, several of the people who are uh, today. Uh, fortunately also in the room, uh, looking at the kind of uh, depth of level of integration between these platforms. And um, so far uh, we came up with a kind of uh, four tiers um, as possible uh, depth of integration. Starting with uh, yeah, level zero, which is a very basic integration basically meaning that uh, go triple is uh, referenced as a data catalog in the marketplace in the shock marketplace and the other way around that shock is registered as uh, yeah, a project in the go triple uh, platform doesn't require any serious integration um, so you could uh, consider it as being very basic then we go to a first uh, or to level one which is a bit uh, more deeply integrated and that would consist out of a multitude of links between both platforms. So what do we mean with that? For instance, that if you um, have a view on a specific uh, tool in the uh, Shock Marketplace, uh, that you then have a link towards the Go Triple platform that allows you to find related papers. Uh, but it would just consist out of having a single link from that entry to the other platform. So no further, uh, say, deep integration on the level of the data uh, exchange. Then there is also um, a, uh, an even deeper level of integration, a level two, uh, where uh, the Go Triple uh, platform would be used as a source for the marketplace, um, so to gather information about data sets and about publications. And then uh, finally, there's an even deeper uh, integration level at level three, where there is really um, a data ingestion pipeline shared between both uh, platforms. Now, um, for the choice on how to do this integration and the depth of integration and the implications, that is also where we have uh, reserved a bit of uh, discussion time uh, for that. Um, just to maybe give a first uh, initiation to the discussion. Uh, personally, I think that uh, a level one integration would be a good starting point because it doesn't introduce too many dependencies from the beginning and still it allows for a mutual recognition and interaction between uh, both platforms. But um, yeah, that's just a, a personal opinion. So uh, yeah, that's maybe a good uh, start into the discussion, I hope. Thank you very much, Dieter. Um, we have a few minutes for uh, for questions before entering in uh, in the discussion phase of the of the session, in which we will go into uh, deeper details for uh, data sets and publication and for data ingestion pipelines. So um, we have some question in the chat. Some were already answered. The last one, maybe, uh, from Yin Chen. Uh, can triple discovery service become part of Shock Marketplace discovery engine? Dieter or uh, Matthew, maybe? Uh, everything can happen, I but I don't see that. I think they, are, they have their own distinct uh, goals and, and um, kind of uh, missions. So I wouldn't see how, why should that uh, not sure what the, where the question is going. Other answers? Well, yeah, I can maybe jump in here. Um, I could see this happening. Uh, obviously, that would be a choice of the user if we have a request from users that this is needed, meaning that uh, the shock marketplace uh, needs to provide uh, uh, better resources for all the data that triple ingest. So you saw the experts, the profile, no, sorry, the yeah, experts profiles and the projects, et cetera. Maybe that would be a mean for the, the shock open marketplace to to provide this information. However, today, 
at least there is no need for that. I mean, we want to provide tools and services inside uh, the shock open marketplace. So yeah, this is probably something to be open for later on. Nowadays, it wasn't really. Yeah, please, Matei. I see. Uh, so the question is, what does it mean become part of? I mean, that can be, that is, depends on what you mean by be, uh, become part of. I mean, the, uh, the uh, integration uh, level two from, from Dieter would be that the data from uh, the triple would also be available through, so like redundantly available also in the marketplace as it is, it is good if you disseminate the metadata on the man, as, many, as many channels as possible. Uh, but really like merging the two system, uh, I don't see that coming. It rather than it, the next integration level would be the, the big EOS catalog where everything will be connected. Yeah, if I may, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, I, I'm not sure I, I understand well the uh, Yin question, but maybe she, because you know the the, the SSH open marketplace is uh, so it's a marketplace uh, which gather tools. So uh, maybe this is how we can uh, understand uh, her Yin's question. It's um, uh, as God Ripple is uh, will be uh, another service. Uh, can it be part of the marketplace? Uh, as, an, as another service, you know, that there are a lot of uh, different services hosted in the SSH open marketplace. Uh, can Triple become one of them? I guess it is one of Sorry, Mate? It would be the integration level zero from the third slide, mm -hmm. right? So that they are linked among each other, basically. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for uh, these uh, discussions. Um, I think we can move on to the two topics that we have identified to be uh, further investigated during, uh, during this session. The first one um, regards the um, data sets and publications because they are uh, two types of content that are present both in the SSH open marketplace and in the GoTriple platform. Uh, so the idea was to um, is now to to present to have a few minutes of presentation of uh, uh, what are the data sets and publication in, for the marketplace or in the marketplace, what are uh, data sets and publication for the triple project, and then to have uh, ten minutes of discussion or a bit more uh, around um, on on the common uh, ground based on this short presentation. Frank, yes, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm really excited about the session and that it actually happens because as we have already seen, there are a lot of things we could do together and also learn from each other. So uh, let me talk uh, about data sets and publications in the SSH open marketplace. So we follow an aggregation approach, uh, which means we do not reinvent publication standards, uh, but maximize their use. That's the plan. Uh, we also have a preference for stable sources with stable interfaces to access metadata, which means that we do not collect by hand, but identify stable sources that we can harvest from. Uh, this, of course, is sometimes tricky and uh, needs a witty idea and good knowledge of the data and publication landscape. For example, the main international conference in the field of digital humanities, the annual ad hoc conferences, do not provide central identifiers for their publications which will hopefully change in the near future. But until then, we are happy to use the fabulous DBLP computer science bibliography, which is uh, founded and maintained in Trier, uh, who harvests and aggregates papers from this conference among hundreds of other conferences, and also offers an API for a standardized and reliable access to this data, which we can then easily include and enrich in our marketplace. So these are the kind of um, uh, projects that we're looking at uh, to maximize their use. We also focus on quality, not quantity, although of course the truth of the matter is always somewhere in between. Uh, so um, we will not have as many data sets and publications in our SSH open marketplace uh, in comparison to open air and also to triple. Arguably the main entity, and that's uh, you know stressing something that Matei already mentioned, um, the main entity of our SSH open marketplaces, uh, open marketplace are tools so in the realm of digital humanities, we have around 1,500 tools for digital research uh, for things like text analysis, network analysis, and many other research steps. So, uh, so that's that. 
uh, and data sets uh, adhering to the fair principles, unfortunately, have not the standing yet in the humanities. But this is changing quickly, and we see emerging best practices in this regard. There are, for example, data repositories from the humanities that we're about to harvest, and also journals for data review. review. And I think the entire landscape for research data in the SSH domains will change, and in fact, is already changing as we speak. Uh, one word on curation. So we have semi-automatized -automat workflows. Uh, our curators can intervene with our automatized data ingestion pipelines, but of course we try to automatize as much as possible, also to be uh, sustainable on the long run. Now, um, the, the absolute key in our endeavor is contextualization. So we have seen many other projects who have specialized in data sets and tools and, and, and aggregating them. And uh, our you know, uh, unique selling point, although we don't try to sell anything, is um, contextualization. So we have, as was already shown, five different entities, papers, publications, tools and services, data sets, workflows, and training materials. Uh, and to connect, uh, for example, two of these entities, which was the first thing we did, uh, we wrote a little tool called Tool Extractor to extract tools mentioned in papers. So we made a connection between papers and tools mentioned, and uh, also wrote a little, 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 a little text about it just to to get also feedback from the community if that's the way things are done and also to to show how things are interconnected because there's not such a good practice uh, in actually mentioning the tools and data sets that you're using for your own research and i think we can be part of a changing culture of mentioning the things that uh, that we're using of course men not mentioning the things is not based on ill will it's just not the standard practice yet but i hope we can help to change that so now we can make the link between tools and research and we will strive to do the same with data and that's why it's so inspiring to see how triple is doing it and with this i give the floor to my colleague of triple to get your idea thank you Thank you, Frank. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, about data sets and publication in Go Triple. A few general, general reminders. Uh, so, our scope are the, the open scholarly resources and uh, which were called before documents or creative works, let's say, open scholarly resources for, to be very generic in the SSH and uh, with a broad definition precisely for these uh, scholarly resources we have data sets and journals monographs and also as publications we intend scientific blogs so the typology is rather broad like i just said the focus uh, of course i would say for as a triple is a service from OPRA, uh, which is a research infrastructure for open scholarly communication our focus will remain the open access uh, according to the European Commission definition you've heard many times before, as open as possible, as close as necessary. And which means also that we will use and provide uh, as far as possible open metadata and that will be reusable as broadly as possible, even here. And so regarding the model, uh, as you have seen before in the presentation from our my colleagues from Emanuel, uh, we will have a single uh, data model for the scholarly resources, the creative works precisely. And um, with uh, specificity regarding the granularity, that is, uh, we will uh, uh, consider the data sets as a whole and uh, expose them as such. And uh, and this will this how this is this is how uh, data sets and publication will be presented together in the Google platform. Uh, as for the quality, uh, right here also you've already seen that the, the, the main aspect of quality in a triple relies on the uh, enrichment pipeline and. Uh, specifically with the, the use of uh, categories and tesori and uh, specific to the SSH you can describe that but maybe it's another part of the discussion and uh, yes uh, the strategy so it's related to uh, 
the architecture that was presented before. So we intend to um, ingest and index and expose any corresponding corresponding to our scope and focus uh, SSH content from many aggregators. In fact, here we have a rather broad uh, understanding of the data sources in our case. But uh, not only <clears throat> we're not interested only in the aggregators, but also in smaller uh, providers like for instance the diamond publishers which could go into uh, which could appear in the go triple platform uh, through one of the aggregators of our architecture starting from Isidore because it is uh, let's say our uh, internal aggregator uh, and the, the, the basis also for the development of the go triple uh, platform in the, in the triple core pipeline also. So this is where we stand uh, just uh, in a very general way and uh, we can go into more details during the discussion, I guess. That's all for me, thank you. Thank you uh, both. Uh, indeed, we have uh, now 15 minutes to, to discuss this data sets and, and publication topic in, in both platforms. Um, so you prepared some questions. I don't know how you want to, to proceed. Um, I don't see any specific question on the chat, but you can also um, raise your hand or unmute yourself. We have time and the uh, possibility to, to have a real discussion. So do not hesitate. Uh, maybe if nobody comes forward, I have an idea uh, inspired by our ongoing discussion, uh, maybe we should form a little task force from two, three triple people and two, three shock people and to identify a small case where we can see how our data can, intercha can be interchanged. Uh, so I'm definitely having my eyes and keeping my eyes and ears open to identify something like that just so we can work on something concretely, uh, even if, if none of our discovery platforms are already in, in uh, you know, in production mode. Uh, but if you have a small use case, I think uh, from a, like maybe a small subset of data that could go in our way, in our direct direction and maybe find its way back to triple with some enriched data or something like that. That's something I'm trying to identify now. So if anybody wants to join me, I, I'd be happy to, to find such a case. I don't know if I will want to join, but I, I, I support the idea. In fact, I think even there are areas where we the work and we can converge and then see investigate about the scenarios that were mentioned mentioned before and uh, yeah that's good to hear and one thing to put on the costume of captain obvious uh, to answer question one how can we make sure our work is complementary uh, by meetings like this you know so this is the first bigger one in uh, in hopefully what will be a series of, of meetings maybe not in such a big group uh, so we should definitely continue this uh, because I'm also learning for the first time the whole breadth of the whole triple project by, you know, seeing you present uh, your, your work packages, but, but I definitely do not know enough yet. So let's continue this. There is a question from uh, Ergebet Totsifra in the chat. Maybe you want to, to unmute Ergebet? Uh, yes, although I don't think it's a very important question because uh, like maybe we should uh, reserve the time that we have to discuss big strategic questions between the two uh, big projects and platforms. It's just uh, uh, a question regarding blogs not having PIDs and uh, therefore what I see is that uh, this content type is completely excluded from uh, big aggregation uh, workflows uh, due to technical reasons, you know. And I know you mentioned uh, that uh, like the, in, in your scope, uh, you mentioned uh, blogs uh, among digital scholarly objects, but uh, this is something that I see as a challenge. I really cannot see uh, possible ways to, you know, upscale the integration of blog content into such databases. Okay, uh, Nathan, thank you for your question. <clears throat> Maybe Laurent can give more details about that then, but um, two things. The, 
first one is that actually these uh, scientific blows are already into Isidore. They, they come mainly from the open edition uh, hypothesis platform. And uh, so <clears throat> there is an existing solution for at least the harvesting, the indexing, and the enrichment uh, to some extent, at least. And of course, it's um, a bit less rich than what we can do with this other types of content, but there are possibilities of increasing discovery, the discoverability of this kind of output. That's the first answer. The second uh, aspect of the answer, <coughs> and regarding the, the PIDs and more specifically, the, I didn't mention that in the presentation, but the uh, should have <laughs> probably the the data model at this uh, at this stage uh, doesn't uh, in, uh, include uh, mandatory fields. The, it's we have we are facing more or less and there's the same kind of challenges that uh, shock uh, is challenging with the heterogeneous uh, metadata metadata model standards and so on. So the idea is to have a flexible uh, data model, and this is what we have with very few uh, uh, with, yeah, requirements for the data model to be able precisely to uh, handle the various cases, even when we don't have very rich metadata. And for instance, regarding the PIDs, here there is a, a possibility, I don't really remember the exact English term, but whatever, the, the, there is a possibility to deal with that even when we don't have the, the PID, and it's actually what Isidore is already doing. That is, when we don't have the PID, uh, we create it internally because we have a system that is able to do that. Here, you the, the, the problem is a bit more complicated because uh, it's not only about the technical feasibility, it is feasible to uh, add a PID to a content which doesn't have it. The, the problem is then uh, if it, to know if it is used by the users. And uh, that's another aspect of, of the problem. But technically, it's not a, a real challenge. The, the, what would be the more challenging maybe is that, uh, yes, mm, uh, with a flexible data model, you're never sure what you will get and what will be the, the let's say, the, the, the quality of the metadata you, 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 will, you will have. But precisely in the case of triple, uh, the strategy is to compensate this with uh, enrichments, and especially in many languages. So maybe this will be my general answer if Laurent wants, wants to step in. Of course, he can. I hope it answers a bit your questions after it. Yeah, just to precise, um, triple uh, triple use uh, aggregator as uh, as a document database, and what we hope is that uh, aggregators as uh, PID for all the documents, all the items they have. So uh, this is a question for the aggregator. So what we do for Isidore, for example, uh, when the producer did not didn't uh, give a PID to the document or to the data set, Isidore uh, add uh, um, uh, a handle uh, for a PID and in triple we will use this uh, Isidore PID. So um, at the harvestment process, uh, all the document, all the data set will have a PID from the aggregator and the triple will use this PID. And for the project and profile, it should be the same. Yes, uh, Suzanne. So it's another question, though, uh, if I may. <laughs> uh, it's a question to our colleague from from Shock, and actually, I'm I'm both I'm part of both. Uh, so it's more how do you manage? Because as we said in Triple, we have uh, some issue with the quality of data uh, we want to harvest and uh, the, the level of detail of metadata. So how do you manage that in shock? Uh, oh, yeah. Matei, do you want to step in? Uh, yeah, um, well, we have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, 
it's a kind of a mixture of um, automatic checks uh, where possible for quality, especially for example, what we can automatically check is the coverage or the metadata coverage. So basically the idea is we try to get into the system everything, anything we can get. So even if the data is very rudimentary and we know only, I don't know, three, three uh, like title and the URL, and we still want to have it in the system, but we won't show it to the user. It will be kind of on our curation list. Uh, it will, can be automatically detected through checks like, okay, there is too little metadata filled out. And then the moderators team uh, would get it kind of on their, um, on their to-do and would try to uh, amend it. Um, but we don't know yet if it, is, if it is works. This is obviously a human kind of, a, a, actually a, an intellectual task, a human task or manual task. Um, and so if we get to, if we are flooded with thousands of items that are not good enough, uh, uh, or then uh, we may run into a problem, but still um, that would be a pipeline. And as we will be able to uh, amend the, the metadata for individual items, they can be published. And so there will be always a kind of a backlog of things. I expect that we will, there will be a backlog of items that are not good enough uh, as they come in anew. Uh, but those that we saw earlier and were able to process in the, through the editorial uh, workflow, uh, those should be good enough to, to publish them. So kind of a continuous uh, curation uh, process is the idea. So supported by, uh, by automatic checks at the beginning, at the center is the editorial board, uh, kind of dedicated people who can work on it. And there is also the community part where we would uh, kind of where we will enable users to also give us feedback and say, "Oh, this is information is outdated, or uh, actually I think this should be different, or something is missing, and so on." So that would be another source of of feedback and for corrections. So do you? So that, that means that you, you, you work on the quality of data and metadata uh, once you, you got them. Uh, you know, in Triple, we, do, we, we try to do both, uh, actually enriching and uh, working on the, on, the, on the data once we, after uh, having harvesting them. But we also have uh, quite a lot of work towards directly the data providers uh, uh, in terms of uh, training, how can they uh, manage and work on their metadata? Isn't it something that we can maybe uh, do all together or? You know how to help or uh, i don't know how it's to really yeah, just yeah. Help, but yeah i mean to amend to to actually make the metadata or the information better at the source is obviously the golden so it's the best way if <laughs> if you are lucky enough to have some uh kind of to be able to push your providers to do something uh we actually don't expect that we can do anything at the sources we take them okay. in exception, but in general we take all kinds of heterogeneous catalogs. Some of them are even abundant or not necessarily curated anymore. And so we need to expect them to be the data as is and then do the uh, improvement uh, curation only after the data is on our side. Okay, thank you. I, I completely support. If you are able to, to correct the data at the source, then by all means do it. We try to, <laughs> it's not, uh, let's see. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> with that. Okay. Yes, but in fact, this is maybe another specification we can <clears throat> bring uh, about the triple architecture. Then, like uh, we mentioned, we have the system based on the aggregators, and uh, let's say we have the internal and the in in aggregator, Isidore, and the external aggregators, OpenAir, Moza, and others. In that case, we would delegate the metadata curation to these actors with some support, of course, uh, based on the data model uh, and, the, and the alignment of the metadata to the triple data model but where we can act in direction uh, of the providers is within the Isidore uh, aggreg aggregator and in fact we are trying to establish some guidelines for providers through, uh, through Isidore. This is where we can hope to, to have some impact on the, for our training guidelines. It's a uh, just in this specific case of the providers that go into triple through through easy door. Yeah. I think we, I, I would assume or my feeling is that one can learn a lot from Europeana there. 
which have established over years a big uh, multi-level aggregation network. Uh, but I think it only works when you have some, it depends on the coupling, on how well the providers are dedicated or, or tied to your overall uh, network and aggregation. Uh, and I'm not, I don't feel like we are in a position to uh, tell something to our, and also, I mean, our, it's also the, I mean, think we need to have this distinction between the ori providers of original sources or original like data sets, like uh, repositories and other catalogs. They are also just already uh, uh, aggregators who only collect metadata so that they, they themselves are not the authoritative source of the information. So it's like multi-level aggregation and uh, uh, yeah, so not sure how much you can do there on this uh, aggregation steps, right? So um, yeah. Also for open air, for example, I mean, it's huge, but if you we try to look into deep into it and the quality is, well, uh, you, they only can work what they find. So uh, bigger is not always better. I mean, there is always a trade-off of quantity and quality. And in terms of updates, uh, what do, what are your plans in terms of uh, maintenance of the, the the data sets or the tools or uh, uh, because there is this strong issue of uh, how to yeah to to keep uh, to have a good update or of the the documents or the the, the tools you harvest uh, do you have already some plans about that because for us it's still the beginning in triple so yeah this will be actually the the kind of the in the long run as uh, the biggest challenge, right? How to keep this updated because to yeah. make it one nicely curated is nice, but to keep it that way, it's it's tedious and not very rewarding, but only then it really is useful for the users. Uh, so the, uh, well, how do we want, we want to make it part of the automatic checks would be kind of how quickly do the, to check how old are the individual items. And for example, what we also can check is, um, what do you call it? Well, for example, the, the links, the URLs, um, if they are still alive. So there are certain things we can do, uh, but uh, again, just the pre-processing for the human uh, checking, but to keep the things updated uh, is would be part of our curation process, long story short. If I, if I can comment, I think it's it, there's some very good points uh, being raised. Uh, someone mentioned indeed that uh, I think it was it was Matei that uh, the, the quality is probably more relevant than the quantity, and there's also a kind of inverse relation with that. If you really have lots and lots and lots of data, the creation becomes much harder, and so it's it's uh, yeah it, it can bring you to some creation difficulties. The other thing is about um, the kind of proactive curation and check. Um, and uh, again, I think or what could be part of the solution there is trying to distribute a bit of the curation load to people who are close to the data sources. So to give a concrete example, um, we're planning to harvest um, the tools that are registered in the, in the switchboard uh, to the shock uh, marketplace. And uh, so, uh, but then you should be able to count on a kind of contract that the maintainers of the marketplace also do some decent curation at the level of entry yeah, to, to, to make sure that things are working. And then and also further, once something has been registered, that there is a kind of continuous check. And Matei already mentioned it, and it's uh, not, not a coincident, of course, that, for instance, link checking is something that can be fairly easily automated, and that is a very relevant thing to do. Um, I think that's again maybe a personal opinion, but I think that that in the level in the realm of, for instance, this automated link checking, there's also a lot to be gained to do things together. For instance, in the context of the European Open Science Cloud, because we need to do this all anyway. So we have aggregation at several levels. We have links that need to be checked, and um, it's impossible to avoid that at a certain point you will need to check. Um, uh, a link uh, from different locations, which puts a lot of stress on the on the resource provider because then you get multiple crawls and checks and so. So sharing uh, information, for instance, about uh, the availability of uh, of links is something that I think would be very well positioned at the level of, of the European Open Science Cloud. And if you put a, a very lightweight microservice to it that allows you to check, hey, has this link been checked over the past month before you need to check it yourself? 
itself, that would be very valuable. And it's also not very or not extremely difficult to implement. And it's absolutely something where you can gain a lot from um, um, the yeah from from pooling resources in that sense. So I think that's that's where the 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 ALS can can help in the, to to solve quality issues or at least uh, be instrumental to do that. Thanks a lot for this kind of also of summary and uh, um, um, of our discussions and also opening up to to possibility uh, for uh, sharing uh, some of the tasks we have to uh, comply all together. I would like to suggest to move to the second topic we prepared for the discussion because it's already uh, three o'clock so the second topic we have for the discussion is the data ingestion pipeline so based on this idea that we could eventually um, uh, share a, data, a common data ingestion pipeline we will um, proceed um, with the same kind of uh, methodology here so first a presentation of the data ingestion pipeline and vision for go triple then a presentation of the data ingestion pipeline and vision for uh, the marketplace and then a time for the discussion uh, so Virginie will present the uh, good triple data ingestion pipeline. Thank you. Hi. So I will present the ingestion pipeline that we're implementing in triple. Uh, so the, the arrows here represent the da data flows. Um, so first we get the, the metadata from the delivery platform. Um, uh, usually it's as a XML format. Then we extract this data with uh, Apache Airflow. Uh, I will talk about uh, Airflow later. Um, then we can do the transformation uh, of the metadata, which is uh, the enrichment. For example, we have a language discovery tool, uh, which is um, a tool that can enrich the data when it's um, when there's a field that is not in English, we translate it to English, for example. We also will have the classification uh, enrichment. Um, so after having transformed the data, we load it to a JSON database, and then we can process the data again to extract it again, to transform it, and then to load it again to the database. Uh, that was for the ingestion pipeline. Um, Next slide, please. So I have chosen, well, we have chosen Apache Airflow. Um, it's a workflow management platform, which is open source. Uh, it gives us a monitoring user interface um, and also a scheduler, which means that we can schedule the frequency of um, a job. For example, we want to enrich the data every month or every week we can just specify in the configuration files. And also it is written in Python 3 language, which means that we can have an easy integration with all the machine and deep learning libraries, um, such as TensorFlow, Keras, and uh, Spark. Well, the Spark binding with Python, which is PySpark. So that was for the uh, data ingestion pipeline of Triple. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virginie. Um, Ola, do you want to present the marketplace ingestion pipeline? Yes, sure. Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, the pipeline in uh, shock looks like that. So we start with harvest, and we we have we will work with heterogeneous data sources. So there is a huge variety of data formats and access protocols. And uh, basically, uh, we should have a separate um, like pl plugin uh, to use a harvesting method separate for, for each of the sources. And then the, the records that we uh, downloaded from the source are transformed to the open marketplace schema. And at the moment, there is no normalization, but we we think that uh, we will define some rules and that will have to be implemented there. And after that, there is an enrich step and um, we want to use LOD vocabularies to enrich uh, the, the records. Basically, the literals will be replaced with uh, 
with concepts from the vocabularies. And the last step is to ingest the record to the open marketplace. And there uh, are some challenges in there to, to detect updates. And that's something that we already discussed. That's um, the really challenging step to, to detect what has been changed uh, at the source and mark it as updated in the marketplace. And in here, we would like to let that curator in the open marketplace decide if the update should be accepted or not. And uh, a little bit similar is uh, detecting the deletion of the records and, and of course we should also give our curators, uh, we should let them decide if they want to delete the record uh, at the marketplace or not. And next slide please. And uh, at the moment uh, we use uh, pool party unified views uh, framework that was provided by one of the project partners. For various reasons, uh, we started to look for alternatives and they are actually um, harvesting frameworks used uh, in cultural heritage. So, uh, for instance, La Polina was developed for PSNC for an aggregator. Uh, the second option, Matis and DCloud, is used at the moment in Europeana for, for their harvesting. And uh, I prepared a review of uh, the options listed in here and is available under the link and we have to decide whether any of this option will work for us as an alternative for the pool party uh, or maybe we will use something else uh, and next slide please yeah here we have uh, actually i listed some of the questions that we might might consider when talking about like, should we connect our source, uh, our efforts, and and use one uh, aggregation framework or not? And on the next slides, um, there are some schemas or, or images that visualize how the um, pipeline works in both cases. Uh, here is shock. So we have a couple of sources, different kind of sources, and they use different aggregation plugins. So we might use some OI harvester or GitHub harvester or connect to an API. And then we we have the records, we downloaded them and they are transformed accordingly to the marketplace uh, schema. So when uh, we use OIA, there are XML records. So we have to use some kind of XLT and then further steps to, to have the JSON uh, with the marketplace schema. And uh, we we do uh, different like different transformation for different kind of uh, records, and then we do the enrichment uh, step. So we we do the lookup for in the vocabulary, uh, and then we perform an API request to save the record uh, in the marketplace. And here uh, probably there are some other requests to check for the updates and for the deletion. Uh, for the simplicity of the image they were not put in here. And the next slide is what, um, how we imagine it looks for triple. And here Yuan helped me a little bit. Actually, he drew that. Uh, so, um, and on the next slide, we, we put those two uh, pipelines together. And uh, with the pink border, um, we selected components that we think might be reusable for both of us. So some of the plugins um, probably will work for both projects. Uh, if we would work with similar data sources and for sure the enrichment plugin uh, would also be reusable or both of us want to have some kind of enrichment. And yeah, maybe we'll go to the questions and start the discussion. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Virginia and Ola, for these presentations. Are there any questions? I cannot see any in the chat. So, so my, maybe I would have one, one, one question. Uh, uh, because as I understand, um, in triple, uh, 
Uh, the intention is to use Apache, uh, how it's called, Apache Airflow. Airflow. And, uh, and it is based, as I understand, on, on Python, right? While in the shock, uh, as far as I um, uh, can tell, I mean, we are using Java. So is there um, a chance to have a connection or even kind of modules that can be reused in those uh, to let's say aggregation pipelines, how do you see it? I mean, it's a, maybe a technical question, but this came to my mind while, you know, uh, um, what presentations. I think you can make a link with the Java jobs uh, by making them run as bash scripts, but I'm not sure that you can uh, get all the logs that you would have in Java uh, as easily as, uh, as you had it in, with the, the Python, but you can still um, use Airflow just as a scheduler of your Java jobs. I okay, so I answered the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this is, we don't use anyhow, this is, as I showed in the architecture, the, uh, our source, our core is Java, but it's actually exposing the REST API. And we are actually now already ingesting through a different system, which I guess is implemented in Java, but it doesn't matter because it communicates with, with our marketplace just through the REST API. So you could do very well in Airflow or any other system. You could do a PHP script uh, for transforming it and then push against the REST API. So the, the ingestion part is completely separated and loosely coupled and only coupled through the REST API. So I don't see a problem there. Yeah, I agree with Matei. And also one of the frameworks that, that is listed there on my list is also written in Python. It uses another uh, pipeline solution, but but it but it uses pipeline, uh, Python. So the only thing that like limits us is uh, are we able to do we have Python developers? Uh, so and uh, to use Airflow and hmm. Well, more than Java. Salary? Can, sorry, is it salary? We have more than Java. Python developers than Java on our side, but it's very different from one partner to the other. I'm sure. actually more proficient in Java, but it was uh, due to the situation. So, but how far are you with Airflow? So <laughs> are you are you exploring it or? Are, yes, are you currently we explore Airflow. Uh, the, 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 the final pipeline should be perhaps in Thailand, uh, so in Java. Uh, currently, we, we, did, we didn't know. What we know that is that the Isidore pipeline, which is on um, uh, a, proprietary, a proprietary uh, um, a language, uh, we, we want to change this uh, the, the Isidore pipeline to, to an open source pipeline. So we, we currently we check uh, what we can do. Uh, and if we find uh, 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 an equivalent solution in the open source model. So uh, currently we, we have started with Airflow. Um, and I know that in human, we also use Talent. So um, the, the, the solution is not, the triple solution is not uh, currently uh, uh, finished. So. Mm. Yeah, so that, but exactly, I think this is absolutely the highest priority with, where we should work together because we are both in the same, I would say, on, in the same or similar situation. We're looking for options uh, for the long term of the, uh, of the pipelines. Uh, and so we should inform each other about the, the, the findings, so to say, and yeah. even if we do, yeah. That doesn't mean that doesn't preclude that we will then have the same system, but uh, to share the knowledge would be important here. So, so, so yeah, I guess we, we should, uh, like in shock, we should consider something as uh, a solution like Airflow, because we at first we focus on ready to use, like in, in quotes, ready to use aggregation solutions. So we wanted it to have like a harvesting plugin, a transformation plugin, and the, the solutions that we reviewed had that. And we would have to adjust that, of course, but they had something to start with. And the Airflow, I think, is, is just a framework that is really uh, that you should uh, implement some 
uh, some code to for, for harvesting for transformation and so on. So I don't think it uh, gives you anything from scratch. Um, but probably a colleagues from uh, Triple can can tell a little bit more uh, about yes, it. It's, um, it just gives you the opportunity to schedule your job and to monitor them. So you can see all the, the jobs that failed, the jobs that uh, was were successful, for example, and then you can rerun the jobs that failed, for example, just these parts. And that's how, that's why the this uh, this was a good uh, tool, I think, for for the workflow management. But it says also, it also also provides features a useful UI and robust integration and easy easy to use. So yes, exactly. <laughs> you, you wouldn't say it's, it's the case. I, doesn't it have come come with a useful UI? There's a really useful UI that you that, that can make. I I, I put a, a screenshot of it uh, on my slide. But uh, yes, you can just see the how the pipeline goes and uh, also the different pipelines and you can just see the how how the, the different jobs uh, were okay. doing. Yeah, okay, but I think we cannot should not go into the details that we can discuss separately. We should inform sure. each other about we're not in this workshop. Maybe we should go with the because I think well, for, for me what is the main challenge and I'm not sure we tackled in the sec in the previous discussion is the vocabulary and the normalization issues. Um, because it's always like a nice box so normalization happen black magic normalization happens here but in my experience it's it's quite a tricky thing where um yeah um it's it's you need human um not only human input but even uh, human agreement <laughs> so yeah you need to have conceptually decide if, if for example the same the, the terms mean the same thing if they are synonymous and so on so this vocabulary uh, collaborative vocabulary management um i didn't see uh well my experience is quite a quite a challenge there so i don't know ideas on that yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would even, yeah, we could also have a look at this slide where all the whole ingestion, both ingestion, let's say, steps are presented. And yeah, yeah. because as you said, yeah, the vocabulary is also is, is highlighted here, but there are also other um, elements that could be maybe uh, work on together. But as you said, vocabulary is definitely one of them. Yeah, because yes, here is just a box, but voc either rich with vocabulary means uh, which vocabulary for which fields, uh, what do I do with, uh, with concepts or with terms that are, that are not in the vocabulary. Uh, so this is a complex uh, thing that um, I'm wondering how, I mean, in rich with vocabulary, what does it mean on your side, Triple? Does it mean uh, that you, if you encounter a string, you match it against the vocabulary and, tr and provide a kind of make it an entity, a link into an entity, or what is in rich in this case? Okay, sh should I jump in or Laurent, you want to take this one? Maybe you can. Ah, sorry, you, can, you go, you Johan. <laughs> okay, yeah, so there is a special task in triple, uh, I think it's a word package two uh, that we saw in one of the slides previously where they are already trying to, uh, via machine learning, to get to understand what kind of uh, data is uh, an item to be able to categorize it. So this is kind of a vocabulary enrichment on one of the items. So if the item is already, uh, uh, how to say that, um, manually, or let's say via training, you push an item by saying it is uh, categories uh, XXX or YYY, then it means that uh, something similar would be probably category XXX of YYY. This is what is meant by enriching with vocabulary. Uh, I think that the third box is actually is not enriched with vocabulary, but it's a mistake. It was a categorization by machine learning and something that can be reused, probably reused by the marketplace as well. Yeah, but that would be only trying to assigning a category to a to an item to re, to guess it's uh, which type of information it is which kind of information it is yes this example yes 
Mm -hmm. So what kind because of information have... but, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, within SSH? So what kind of, uh, of uh, SSH data we are talking about? So is it uh, archaeology data? Is it uh, social sciences? Things like that. But then it's discipline. So it's also you're trying to guess it. So because, yeah, exactly. There, so because there are different kinds of vocabularies, right? So or you can have something that you try to describe. So different dimensions than you try to describe with the vocabulary. So for example, discipline or the activity type or the uh, generic keyword or topic classification. Um, Yes, but uh, actually, we, we have two levels. We have the levels of the categories, and there is also Thesaurus, which is based on, uh, which is current, which we are currently building. And uh, so it's uh, still provisional, but uh, it's based on the RCSH, the Library of Congress subjects. And uh, <clears throat> I like uh, what you indicate in your slide that you translate, you intend to translate the vocabulary into English, because actually, what we do actually. Currently, in our case, is the opposite that you're translating from English into other languages, which is another question about uh, scientific quality. And uh, yes, well, I, I guess even on that topic, the vocabulary is maybe we need to discuss much uh, much more in detail because, in fact, the uh, common work on these aspects are, is necessary, and we need to see if uh, yeah how the processes can fit if we. Because in our case, we have a single, the vocabulary is a single entity, non hierarchical, for instance, in the case of the terms, precisely, not the, or even the categories are non hierarchical. I don't know, I wanted to ask that in your case, when you say uh, enriched with vocabularies, if you have already uh, an instance of the vocabulary, if it is hierarchical or not, if it is uh, <clears throat> from various vocabularies existing already, or what is the situation in your case? Yeah, the I mean, we have many vocabulary. The, the shortest answer you can, Matei, to allow us to move it. To oh, move shit. On. This, this difficult question, the short answer, no possible. Uh, we have um, uh, many vocabulary, multiple vocabularies for different dimensions we want to describe. Uh, and we, we try to reuse existing ones and then either adjust them or create new ones and then map from the source vocabularies to the to these decided vocabularies on our side. But yeah, so all kinds of situations there. But multiple vocabularies, it's not like one. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much um, for this very interesting discussion. I'm pretty sure that part of the conclusion uh, will be that uh, we will um, I need further work, but I will let uh, Suzanne Dumouchel and Frank Fischer um, present a conclusive word. Uh, Suzanne, maybe you want to start? Yeah, okay. There is. Uh, thank you, Laure. Uh, so thank you uh, first to uh, all the, the participants, because uh, I agree with Laure, and I think we all agree on that. Uh, it was uh, really interesting and uh, the beginning of, uh, uh, of uh, upcoming work uh, between both projects. So the two main points uh, I'd like to raise, and I guess uh, Frank will have more uh, regarding uh, our discussion, uh, is that uh, both platforms are complementary and not competitive, even if some data set can maybe uh, be used in both platforms, but uh, uh, we, uh, we, we see that uh, Triple is uh, uh, focused on data set project profile on one side and for the SSH open marketplace it's tool services and training with of course the data set and publication which are linked uh, to the tools and services on the other side so it's really uh, uh, we we are lucky I think uh, in the SSH to have these two complementary services uh, which are currently uh, uh, going to be uh, developed uh, which are the, the under development and uh, just to say that uh, I guess, and I think we all agree ag again, that this uh, session today was uh, the first uh, step of a common work. Uh, actually not the first because we started at the previous uh, Triple Consortium meeting in October uh, to make a presentation on the shock uh, main output. Uh, and we, what we expect now is to, to, to have a longer workshop maybe beginning of uh, the new, the next year, uh, to discuss more the different issue we, we started uh, together, so to, to discuss today. Uh, so about uh, vocabularies, uh, that, uh, uh, management and harvesting, and, um, and uh, also how to integrate, what kind of integration do we want? 
uh, only a light, uh, light one or uh, a bigger one. I'm, I'm not sure this is actually the main, um, the most important, the, the level of uh, integration, but uh, the most important is to, uh, uh, to share the knowledge uh, that we have uh, within both projects uh, in order to, uh, to reuse uh, uh, the work which is already done. So uh, Frank, uh, that's, uh, that's it for me, uh, please. Merci beaucoup, Suzanne. <laughs> so uh, I would not call this a conclusion. I would rather call for a continuation of what we uh, were just discussing and talking about. So uh, again, since we're ag aggregating similar entities, uh, both in the triple project and in CHOC, I want to repeat my idea to identify some small use case uh, where we could see how information could flow in both directions. And I think uh, the first, the first small success would be if two identifiers from us and from from Shock and from Triple would point to each other. So that would be like the 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 very very small goal. But then we could, I think, see how this could evolve into something that's that's much uh, tighter integrated. Uh, so what I would also call for is uh, to keep each other updated, also with our development versions. So. Um, I know that there's a lot of development uh, in uh, in Triple that that's not um, you know that that you don't see if you're not in the project. So I personally and I think also my colleagues would be interested in getting um, a glance at that uh, you know at some point because I'm very impressed by what you presented about the, the logic like in, in, in your backend. And uh, we in Shock are also happy to share our dev versions with you just so we can see and have early glimpses and can understand better how things work. And then, of course, uh, I strongly support what Suzanne said. Uh, we need to uh, to align each other's work, but that's, I mean, you know, an obvious take on on this session. So this is um, this would be my concluding words, calling for a continuation. Thank you. But thank you very much to uh, everybody. We are even four minutes before the. Uh, before the, the official end of the meeting, but uh, uh, I will only use one to thank all the presenters and the speakers. I hope for the participants it was not too overwhelming to have uh, so many speakers. It was uh, indeed a very good opportunity for uh, both team to, uh, to meet and I find it really interesting to actually meet in this kind of open se settings during a conference, allowing also uh, other people not directly part of these projects to uh, have a look at what is in the making, because uh, it's really some, some things that uh, are in the making that we have presented today. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to all of you, and uh, we hope to see you soon uh, in uh, other conferences or uh, projects meetings or uh, uh, in the EOS context and in this uh, Freya EOS Cub Shock conference. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.